Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're doing brakes and we're going with the Ran Sotos, the severe duty brake pads. And so basically you need a part number for the right and a part number for the left. So make sure you don't get two of each to go on each side to do the front and rear. So what you're gonna need to do this is some brake grease for brakes, 15 millimeter and you can use it as a ratchet or you can use it as like this as well. You need a C-clamp. You need a toothbrush. You're gonna need some brake clean. Then back to take off your wheels. And that's about it. So let's get started. We'll take the tire off first. That's done. Take the wheel off. That's done. And now you got your brakes. So the first thing you do when you're changing brake pads, is 30 torque. Oh, that's what I forgot to mention. So, grab a ratchet and a 30 torques. And you stick it in this little hole. And they might be tight. Because they get full of junk, I guess. So do this before you Unscrew the 15 millimeter bolts in the back there. Gives you a stronger, since it's on the bike, so on the side by side, so it stays. It's easier to work it. So I take those off first. And I recommend when you get the brake pads, there's not much difference, like if there is any difference that uh, you get the ones with the pins. So you can just replace the pins. The, the pins that come with it come with uh, Loctite already on them, so. Also what I like to do is, they won't come out, so either grab yourself a flat screwdriver or a little pick, grab your impact in reverse once it's out, give them a spin, and it's like you're taking the rust off of them. You're you're anti-spinning them and they don't want to come out and there's no way you can push them from the back so basically just grab like a little pick or something get it moving forward oh she slipped back in and then spinning them took the rust off of them so that make it easier to spin out right so that's why i recommend you get the new pins don't even bother. They come in the kit. So, no headache there. Same thing with this one. Just get it to... I find the pick goes better because you can slide it on the threads at, at the beginning. And then just yank it out. So, that's that for that. To remove the pins first. And as you can see, oops, the kit comes with it and they already got break uh, not break clean but lock tight on the, the thread so we're gonna move on to the 15 millimeter so you can either use that or that's a 14 hopefully it comes off with this if not you can use a power bar with a 15 and I guess it's good enough I recommend you slack them both before you take the nut out because if you take the whole one on the top off first 
and you go to unscrew the bottom one, what will happen to it? Caliper will move forward. I'll put lots of tension and kink your line here. So make sure you do the one that's, a, that's in the bottom first, and then the opposite, the one at the top first to come out on the other side, just to prevent from kinking the line. So that's that for the, these 15 millimeter bolts. Try to make this as quick as we can. And that's that for that. You see they come with Loctite from the company Yellow right from the beginning, so. And then wiggle your brake out. And as you can see, mine are full of junk. So I'm gonna put this stuff away. All right. Now to remove the brake pads, you remove this one on this side first, like this, see? Uh, my front pads were still good. My rear pads were, didn't have no more wear marks. Actually, no. As you can see, she was getting thin at the end there, but not bad for three years. And then you got all this junk kicked in there, so we're gonna clean that out. So. Oops, little pick. Clean out the mud. You guys can fast forward if you don't want to see me cleaning mud. That's what's great about these videos. You're bored at some point and you want to get to just to what you're doing. Go to the next step, skip it. I won't feel anything about it. It's all good. But just make sure you get in there. And then there's an anti-rattle clip right here there underneath that I'm cleaning. So if you've already skipped, I didn't tell you about the anti-rattle clip. So sometimes it's good not to skip. And uh, yeah, my brakes were due to get clean more than one way. That's what happens when you play in the mud all the time. This is not... Guys showing you how to do this on a brand new clean machine. And then grab some air. Safety glasses, if you want to add it to the list, is a good thing. All right. I'll go turn that off so that doesn't annoy you guys. Or I'll just cut it out. Yeah. So now to brake clean time and toothbrush time. So basically what you're looking at cleaning, the most important part here is where the caliper slides back in. So you want to clean around there because you're going to be pushing them in with the C-clamp, right? So get in there with the toothbrush, clean around it. So you don't want to force anything in there. There, my little clip just came out. Well, clean it good so we can sit it back into the proper position. Make sure you put that in because that's your brakes are going to rattle and you're going to have a rattling noise after. Yeah. <sighs> 
and this is going to be the same for all four corners, right guys? So, and then once you're done scraping around, a little more air. And don't step on your clip. And we'll put that clip back in there actually. We'll clean it off. Dry it off. That's what your clip looks like. You can pinch the holes, pinch the back a little bit so it's nice and tight. Actually, you can't even pinch it with your fingers. You can bend the curve a little bit just to say, get some spring back in it because that's where the brakes are going to sit the anti rattle. And then fill it in. Better to try to get in this way and then right in the middle. There you go. It's sitting in there. That's it. You can see that. All right, now next is, after you play in the mud like this all the time, well, this part of the caliper, it's got two little rubbers here on each side, one big one, one small one, and try to press on it. See if you got, see, free play, like this. I don't know if the camera can do, see how it extends. Well, believe it or not, this, I did the rears, and the rears wouldn't move at all. So basically, what I suggest is there's a little rubber that sits on a lip at the end. Pop the lip like I did. Pull this back. And twist it a little bit. Try not to rip the boot. They seem to be pretty tough. And then pull the off of it. And then pull it straight out. There we go. As you can see, the other ones barely had any of that uh, brake grease. So anyway, so we'll clean this out. So basically, clean the bottom where it sits. Stuff never hurt. All right. Then you grab your brake grease, throw a dab on it, throw a dab on it. And another thing you could add is a pair of latex gloves. If you're afraid of getting your hands dirty, you can add that to the list. This stuff is sticky. Doesn't take much. There we go for that. So that's done for that. And what you're gonna do is, since you got those off, well, you're gonna blow inside. baked off mud off of them. And what I like to do actually is, it's rubber, right? So rubber tends to dry. So lubricating rubber with a grease or an oil actually prolongs the life. So, and the flexibility and prevents it from cracking. So I'm not, I'm basically just smearing the hell out of them. making them feel new again. So 
so they felt pretty dry at the beginning there and this should give the seal some extra couple years of life and then just wipe them clean what do i do with my rag oh, right here so remove the access and actually there you go all right blow back that out Now, C-clamp time to push those back in. And you can do one at a time, it doesn't make a difference. So. Make sure you're not pinching anything in the back, the line or anything, that you're sitting on the flat surface. And then just, they should go in easy. If they don't, there's a problem. And they should sit to about there, not inside. Do the next one. Make sure she's sitting flush. Oops. Well, you could actually push it inside the middle if your C-clamp is small enough, but then you'll have to unscrew more if you want to try it that way. I haven't done any that way, but actually it's a nuisance if you do it that way. Well, it'll push it in evenly, I guess. There you go. And unscrew it, it doesn't take long anyway, so. Actually, it takes longer when you can't just release and pull off, I guess. So maybe don't go in the middle if you don't want to, but in the middle, you're guaranteed to push it evenly in. So that's that for that. So done with the C-clamp. And to know when you get your brakes, which side goes with what, simple. Put your brake pads on top of the one that's showing you. So obviously, you know it's not going to be going that way to match it because it'll be on the opposite side right so i got the wrong side so and then you grab this and then you know that's the proper side right and this one well it doesn't really matter which side goes because they're both the same so that's the pack so let me grab a knife If you guys are still watching at this point, appreciate you guys. Please subscribe if you haven't. So that's that. So you're taking this one here first. Then you need the pins, right? So basically, I guess that's why we got brake clean. You sit it in. So it sits there on the anti-rattle plate in the bottom. So that's gonna prevent it from rattling. All right, so that's that. But first, I forgot, you gotta put this back plate back on. So that's what we gotta do first. So grab your, that you re-greased and everything. And you can't screw up which side it goes on because that's got a big hole and that's got a small hole. And you got a big pin and a small pin. And it's obviously got to be facing to go into the hole, right? So. But the only thing here is you got to make sure the little edge here, that this, this the rubber goes and sits on both of them. So you can try to just completely squeeze them in and you'll feel them pop on. And then let me flip this around. You pull them away and you see it's holding because it's stretching and it's holding because it's stretching you know they're clipped on properly and they got onto the lip all around 
You can wipe the excess because you don't want too much grease where there's brakes. There we go. And then push it in. So that's that for that. Now, brake time. So the one without the lip goes in first. So that sits in the bottom. Well, actually on top, but I got it upside down so it sits in there. So basically sit that there so the pins can catch it. There you go. And then the next one hooks onto this, slides in there, simple as that. And then you grab your pins and push because if you pulled your, your your retainer clip the rattling clip is pushing against the brakes and then you can push down on the other one and then once the pin sits at the bottom because this here only starts threading down there so actually you can push it all the way that's when you know you've gotten it sitting properly there you go see it's sitting in there same thing with this one. Oh, that one went straight in that's that so grab your third 30 t30 and this you don't want to over tighten so just basically they got locked tight on them anyway so a little snug and that's it and then while I was talking about the little the, to spread out your brake pads just get in there like that because your your pistons are pushed all the way in right and that's it. And then sit it that it fits. And then grab your two 15 millimeter bolts. Put some blue Loctite on them. And put them back in. I didn't put any blue Loctite because since I'm here, I believe I'm just showing you guys the process. I'm putting it back together because I'm going to grease my front wheel bearings since I got the front end apart and the caliper off. Just play with it till it lines up. What the hell is your problem? There we go. There. Wiggle it till it sits. And then be start them by hand so you don't cross thread anything. And I, I don't remember what the torque spec is. So what I'll do is I'll just, when I'm doing this, I'll just put it in there. I'll research it so you guys don't have to worry about finding out what the torque spec is on those things. Just don't forget the blue Loctite. So thanks for watching and uh, it's like that on all four corners, same thing. Just make sure it's like you can't screw it up. So take your time. All right, so catch you on the next one, guys. And uh, appreciate you guys coming back. All right, catch you later for now. Bye-bye, be safe.